Scoop is an Apache Hadoop ecosystem project. It is a command line interface application for transferring data between relational databases and Hadoop. It supports incremental loads of a single table or a freeform SQL query. Imports can also be used to populate tables in Hive or HBase. Exports can be used to put data from Hadoop into a relational database. While companies across industries are trying to move from structured relational databases like MySQL, Teradata, Neteza, and so on to Hadoop, there were concerns about the ease of transitioning existing databases. It was challenging to load bulk data into Hadoop or access it from MapReduce. Users had to consider data consistency, production system resource consumption, and data preparation. Data transfers using scripts was both time-consuming and inefficient. Direct access of data from external systems was also complicated. This was resolved with the introduction of Scoop. Scoop allows smooth import and export of data from structured databases. Along with Uzi, Scoop helps in scheduling and automating import and export tasks. Scoop in real life can be used in online marketers. Coupon.com uses Scoop to exchange data between Hadoop and the IBM Neteza Data Warehouse Appliance. The organization can query its structured databases and transfer the results into Hadoop using Scoop. The Apollo Group, an education company, also uses Scoop to extract data from databases as well as to inject the results from Hadoop jobs back into relational databases. Scoop is an Apache Hadoop ecosystem project. Its responsibility is to import or export operations across relational databases like MySQL, MS SQL, and Oracle to HDFS. Let's discuss the various reasons for using Scoop. SQL servers are deployed worldwide. A SQL server is the primary way to accept the data from a user. Nightly processing is being done on SQL servers for years. Scoop allows you to move data from traditional SQL DB to Hadoop HDFS, as Hadoop makes its way into enterprises. Transferring the data using automated scripts is inefficient and time-consuming, hence, Scoop is used. Traditional DB has reporting, data visualization, and other enterprise built-in applications. However, to handle large data, you need an ecosystem. The need to bring the process data from Hadoop HDFS to the applications like Database Engine or Web Services is satisfied by Scoop. Scoop is required when a database is imported from a relational database, RDB, to Hadoop or vice versa. A relational database, or RDB, refers to any data in a structured format. Databases in MySQL or Oracle are examples of RDB. While exporting databases from a relational database to Hadoop, users must consider consistency of data, consumption of production system resources, and preparation of data for provisioning downstream pipeline. While importing the database from Hadoop to a relational database, users must keep in mind that directly accessing data residing on external systems within a MapReduce framework complicates applications. It also exposes the production system to excessive loads originating from cluster nodes. Hence, Scoop is required in both scenarios. Let's look at the benefits of using Scoop. It transfers data from Hadoop to an RDB and vice versa. It transforms data in Hadoop with the help of MapReduce or Hive without extra coding. It is used to import data from an RDB, such as SQL, MySQL, or Oracle, into the Hadoop Distributed File System, or HDFS. It exports data back to the RDB. Following is a summary of Scoop processing. It runs in a Hadoop cluster. It imports data from the RDB or NoSQL DB to Hadoop. It has access to the Hadoop core, which helps in using mappers to slice the incoming data into unstructured formats and place the data in HDFS. It exports data back into RDB, ensuring that the schema of the data in the database is maintained. Here is an outline of the process. Scoop performs the execution in three steps. First, the data set being transferred is divided into partitions. Next, a map-only job 
is launched with individual mappers responsible for transferring a slice of the data set. Lastly, each record of the data is handled in a type-safe manner as Scoop uses metadata to infer the data types. MySQL Basics In this demo, you will learn how to work with MySQL databases. Type MySQL hyphen U training hyphen P training to connect to MySQL databases. In this command, hyphen U denotes username, which is training, and hyphen P denotes password. In this case, the password is also training. Type show databases if you want to view all the databases present in MySQL. You can see that there is a Simply Learn database available, which will be used in the demo. Type Use Simply Learn to enter the Simply Learn database. Now, as you can see, you are inside the database. Type Show Tables if you want to view all the tables present in the Simply Learn database. Notice that there is an account table present in the Simply Learn database which will be used in further demos of Scoop. This brings you to the end of this demo. In this demo, you have learned to connect to a MySQL database, view the tables inside a database, and enter a database. Use the command shown on the image to import data present in MySQL database using Scoop, where simply learn is the database name and device is the table name. The process of the Scoop import is summarized on the screen. Scoop introspects the database to gather the necessary metadata for the data being imported. A map-only Hadoop job is submitted to the cluster by Scoop. The map-only job performs data transfer using the metadata captured in Step 1. The imported data is saved in a directory on HDFS based on the table being imported. Users can specify any alternative directory where the file should be populated. By default, these fields contain comma-delimited fields with new lines separating the different records. Users can also override the format in which data is copied by explicitly specifying the field separator and recording terminator characters. Further, users can easily import data in Avro data format by specifying the option as Avro data file with the import command. Scoop supports different data formats for importing data. It also provides several options for tuning the import operation. Let's discuss the process of importing data to Hive and HBase. First, Scoop takes care of populating the Hive Metastore with appropriate metadata for the table and also invokes the necessary commands to load the table or partition. Next, using Hive import, Scoop converts the data from the native data types in the external data store into the corresponding types within Hive. Further, Scoop automatically chooses the native delimiter set used by Hive. If the data being imported has a new line or other Hive delimiter characters in it, Scoop allows the removal of such characters. The data is then correctly populated for consumption in Hive. Lastly, after the import is completed, the user can operate on table just like any other table in Hive. Now that you have seen the process in importing data into Hive, Let's talk about the process involved in importing data into HBase. When data is imported into HBase, Scoop can populate the data in a particular column family in an HBase table. The HBase table and the column family settings are required to import a table to HBase. Data imported to HBase is converted using its string representation and inserted as UTF-8 bytes. Use the commands shown on the screen to import data to HBase. Connect to the database using the first command. Specify the parameters such as username, password, and table name using the second command. Create an HBase table with the column family as specified in MySQL using the third command. Now let's discuss the process of exporting data from Hadoop using Scoop. Use the command shown in the terminal to export data from Hadoop using Scoop. Listing table of MySQL DB through Scoop. In this demo, you have learned to view all the commands through Scoop and list the table present in a database through Scoop. Type Scoop help to view all the supported commands in Scoop. Notice that there is a list tables API that lists the available tables in a database.
Now let's see how you can do that with the scoop command. Type the command. To do that, you will use the scoop list tables API hyphen hyphen connect, then the connection string to connect to MySQL DB. In this demo, we will use the simply learn database. You can list the tables by providing the database name, which is simply learn hyphen hyphen username, which is training, and hyphen hyphen password, which is training for the MySQL DB. Notice the result displayed on the screen, accounts. This brings you to the end of this demo. In this demo, you have learned to view all the commands through Scoop. You have also learned to list the table present in a database through Scoop. We need to perform the following steps to export data from Hadoop using Scoop. First, introspect the database for metadata and transfer the data. Next, transfer the data from HDFS to the DB. Further, Scoop divides the input data set into splits. It uses individual map tasks to push the splits to the database. Each map task performs this transfer over many transactions to ensure optimal throughput and minimal resource utilization. Now we will look at the various connectors using which we can connect to Scoop to different databases. The different types of Scoop connectors are generic JDBC, default Scoop, and fast path connectors. The generic JDBC connector can be used to connect to any database that is accessible via JDBC. The default scoop connector is designed for specific databases such as MySQL, PostgreSQL, Oracle, SQL Server, and DB2. The fast path connector specializes in using specific batch tools to transfer data with high throughput. For example, MySQL and PostgreSQL databases. We have learned that Scoop divides the task into four default mappers. Let me explain you how parallelism helps Scoop in dividing tasks other than default mappers. By default, Scoop typically imports data using four parallel tasks called mappers. Increasing the number of tasks might improve import speed, but note that each task adds load to your database server. You can influence the number of tasks using the dash M or num mappers option. But Scoop views this only as a hint and might not honor it. In the following screenshot, we set parallelism to eight. Common Scoop commands are listed on the screen. The first command on the screen is to import the data from the MySQL table scoop demo to an HDFS directory. Note, hyphen M1, which ensures that there is only one mapper output. In the second command, note that ID is greater than two, which places a condition on data to be imported. You can also specify a specific SQL query as shown in the third command on the screen, where it says hyphen E select start from scoop underscore demo, where ID equals 13. The third command on the screen shows an export function. Please note the hyphens and the double hyphen before driver, connect, username, and password. There are some more commands listed on the screen for your reference. Importing RDBMS table to HDFS. In this demo, you will learn how to import the table accounts from simply learn DB to the default HDFS location. Type HDFS DFS hyphen rm hyphen r accounts to delete the accounts table from this directory. This will remove the accounts table from the default directory if the table exists. Type the command. Now, in order to import the accounts table from MySQL DB to HDFS, you will have to type the scoop import connection string for MySQL DB. You will have to provide the simply learn database username for MySQL, password for MySQL, hyphen hyphen table, and the name of the table that you want to import to HDFS. Type HDFS DFS hyphen cat 
accounts to confirm the creation of this table. As you can see, it shows that a directory named Accounts has been created. Type HDFS DFS hyphen LS accounts to view the content of the accounts directory. You will notice that multiple part files have been created. You can view the files by providing the whole file name. Type HDFS DFS hyphen cat accounts slash asterisk. So let's view this zero 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 file. Notice the output displayed on screen, which is the data present in the accounts table. This brings you to the end of this demo. You have now learned to import a table to a default location and to remove a table from the default directory. You have also learned to create a table, confirm its creation, and view the contents of the created table. This command will list all tables in the Simply Learn database in MySQL. In this screen, let's look at Scoop's limitations. Client-side architecture does impose some limitations in Scoop. Client must have JDBC drivers installed for connectivity with RDBMS. Client-side architecture requires connectivity to cluster from client. Users have to specify username and password. It's difficult to integrate a CLI within external application. It is not supported with no SQL DB because it is tightly coupled with JDBC semantics. Scoop 2 is the next generation version of Hadoop. Following are the advanced features when compared to Scoop. Client server design addresses limitations described earlier. API changes also simplify development of other Scoop connectors. Client requires connectivity only to the Scoop server. DB connections are configured on the server by a system administrator. End users no longer need to possess database credentials. Centralized audit trail. Better resource management. Scoop server is accessible via CLI, REST API, and Web UI. Scoop 2 is being actively developed. Currently, Scoop 2 has fewer supported features than Scoop. Hey, want to become an expert in big data? Then subscribe to the Simply Learn channel and click here to watch more such videos. To nerd up and get certified in big data, click here.